Hi everyone, welcome back again to our YouTube channel. In this video lecture, we'll try to understand the concept of impedance matching and the and and the 50 ohm termination. Why is it 50 ohm termination impo important? Why we consider only 50 ohms? Why not different values of impedance when we transmit a signal via a transmission line from one point to another? To begin with, let's understand the concept of impedance matching at first. So when we pass a signal between the source and the load, we have to have the perfect matching of the impedance. For example, let's give a signal 1 volt peak to peak or give some signal from function generator 1 volt sinusoidal signal with a 10 kilohertz frequency. Now connect a VNC cable which is a, again a transmission line from one of the channel of the, of the function generator to the scope. Now we set the load impedance of this which is 50 ohm and this is in high G state. 1 mega that is the uh, impedance of this scope. Now, here it's 50 ohm and here is 1 mega. In the second case, we'll try to keep both 50 ohms 50 ohm termination, the load impedance at the function generator, and here as well 50 ohm. So, let's look at this example through the circuit diagram. So, to begin with, this is the first circuit where we have um, so this display implies. The display of the function generator and this measured voltage is basically the measurement of the voltage on the on the scope and same here in both the cases this voltage v is two times the display voltage so the voltage that is displayed on the function generator is half of the voltage half of this voltage v okay so if we want to measure the voltage after connecting this uh, after connecting the VNC cable from the function generator to the scope. So this is a scope. This is the display. What happens here is if you want to measure the voltage V here, what we can do is we can apply the voltage divider rule and that is V measured equals half times voltage. So you can also use R times V divided by R plus R, right? In this case, R is 50. So v into 50 divided by 100 which gives us v by 2 right but what we are concerned about is the display voltage right and we know that v equals 2 times the display right so this will give us 2 times display divided by 2 so what we get is the display voltage what does that mean that means if a set if we set a voltage that means if we set a voltage of 1 volt here in the function generator display, what we measure here in the scope will also be 1 volt. That is because we have 50 ohm termination in both the cases. Here is 50 ohm and here also we have 50 ohm. So when there is perfect impedance matching between the source and the load, we get the voltage what we set here. Okay, if you set a voltage of 1 volt, we get a voltage of 1 volt in the scope. Let's consider the another case when we keep the high Z, the impedance of the scope is in is very high. Go back to the circuit again. So in the second case, what we see here is there is no 50 ohm impedance in this case and we want to measure the voltage. So here we will connect. So let us consider the case too where the function generator is again set to if 1 volt peak to peak. We set the voltage of 1 volt peak to peak using the knob. In the function generator so this will display here 1 volt peak to peak now we want to measure this voltage 1 volt peak to peak on the scope so does it measure the same voltage 1 volt peak to peak or is it different so that we are going to see in the second case again we'll apply the voltage divider rule and we know that the scope impedance is is 1 meg mega ohm so 1 mega ohms is much more than 50 ohms so let's say this one as r1 and this is r2 so what we can write v measured equals v times r2 divided by r1 plus r2 since r2 is much more than r1 therefore we can write measured voltage as v times r2 divided by r2 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 gets cancelled and we just get v so measured voltage is nothing but the voltage which is here right and we know that the V equals V times 2 times the display. Okay, display is basically the voltage which is displayed on the, 
on on the function generator screen okay so what we get is two times display voltage and what is displayed here one volt peak to peak so two into one volt gives us two volt so what did that mean the scope will measure a voltage of two volt instead of one volt when there is mismatch in the impedance of the uh, impedance of the function generator and the scope so that is why the impedance matching is very important when we transmit a signal from one point to another so that's all about the concept of impedance match in this case there was perfect matching 50 ohm and 50 ohm that is why we were getting the same voltage which we were giving through the function generator so remember in both the cases the display the function generator displays a voltage of one volt peak to peak in both this case as well as this case but in the first case due to the 50 ohm termination we get scope also displays the voltage of one volt peak to peak which is as expected but in the second case when scope is in high g state we get a voltage twice the voltage which we apply through the scope so that is the problem with impedance mismatching okay so that's all about impedance match, uh, impedance uh, matching as such now let's consider why we need a mathematical aspect of impedance matching why we need to have the same voltage 50 ohm 50 ohm or high g and high g high g state between the source and the load to understand that let's go into mathematics of it so what is the reason why we need to have the perfect impedance matching and i mean 50 ohm and 50 ohm or high z and high z for that the concept of reflection coefficient comes into picture the reflection co co coefficient tells that it, it tells you how well the a signal has been transmitted it means let's say we transmit a signal of one volt peak to peak now are we getting the same voltage at the output or not okay at the end of transmission line so that is defined by the reflection coefficient so let's say we pass a signal through a transmission line vnc cable here is a transmission line this vnc wire has a characteristic impedance of 50 ohm we'll study why we need why do we need to choose 50 ohm why not other value in so let's understand if this has 50 ohm termination now if let's say we connect this to the pcb and if it doesn't have 50 ohm termination again we'll get some distort signal so to have the 50 ohm termination it must be equal to each why we need to have the 50 ohm both at both the places source and the load it is because of reflection coefficient so if it reflects if it reflects some signal then there is loss in the strength of the signal so the reflection coefficient de describes that the ratio of reflective wave to the incident wave at, at the end of the tra transmission line. So ZL is the load impedance and ZO is the characteristic impedance of the transmission line. And if both are equal, what we get, let's say ZL equals Z0 implies 0, right? 0 divided by uh, 2 times z0 which is 0 so if reflection coefficient is 0 it gives you the perfect if, if there is perfect matching of the impedance between the load in the turn and and the characteristic impedance we get reflection coefficient 0 the zero reflection co coefficient implies there is complete the co signal is completely absorbed there is no reflection of the signal and that is what our goal is to get the signal without any distortion now what are the other impacts of this reflection coefficient if there is reflection coefficient zero it will also help us to transfer the power well uh, properly from one point to another because if you let's look at the power formula so another factor that defines the propagation of the wave in in transmission line is the voltage standing wave ratio that is vswr so if v vswr is 1 it means it in, it indicates the perfect matching that that implies there is no distortion in the signal so if tau th this reflection coefficient is 0 then what we get is 1 plus 0 divided by 1 minus 0 which is 1 it means the signal which we gave is ref uh, without any reflection we got the same signal at the output so the reflection coefficient is zero in this case as well now another factor could be the how well that power is transferred from one point to another for that we have this formula and imagine if 
reflection coefficient is 0 for that we have to have again zl equals zo that will again make load power power at the load is equal to the power at the input and it means the complete power has been transferred from one point to another so another factor that define that defines the signal strength right how well the signal has been transmitted there is no distortion in the signal so we can say the minimum attenuation right so to have the minimum attenuation, the for uh, the the formula says the v out equals v input times one minus the reflection coefficient. Again, if reflection coefficient coefficient is zero, which occurs when there is impedance matching, Z L equals Z O, right? In that case, we get output voltage equals the input voltage, right? Therefore, in all these three scenarios, what we can say that be it the maximum the power transfer and the loss the signal attenuation and the voltage standing wave ratio in all these three cases what matters is the reflection coefficient to be should be zero to have the to transfer the signal in properly and for that we have to have perfect impedance matching and the condition for the perfect impedance matching is zl equals zo it means the load impedance must be equal to the uh, characteristic impedance of the transmission line therefore we go for matching of the impedance to transmit the signal properly so that's all about the importance of impedance matching now in the second half now we'll study about why we need to consider this 50 ohm why not 7 why not 100 ohms or any other value again these are the factors which we consider for perfect imp impedance matching uh, decides uh, basically now the factors that decides the perfect why we need to choose 50 ohms not any other value are, are, are the the way we transfer the signal it means there should be minimum attenuation and the maximum power transfer so we want to transfer the power from one point to another as good as possible at the same time with the minimum loss so the first condition we'll study about minimum attenuation what is the impedance at which there is minimum attenuation in the signal so what makes the attenuation as such in general first so when we transfer a signal from one point to another there could be through the wire through the transmission line there is loss due to dielectric right and resistive loss so the resistive loss is basically due to the current right and if we we know the formula we just simply apply the ohm's law r equals v y i so we can say i equals v y r so if this impedance is more we get less current if the current is less the resist uh, resistive loss would be less so this is the loss per length right per unit length how much is the loss this is the formula for loss per unit length now these are the values mathematical equation for that in the second half this is z naught which is the characteristic impedance of, of of the transmission line if we plot the loss per length versus z naught what we need right now is minimum loss right so there would be graph if we try to draw the graph of loss versus loss per unit length versus z naught okay and then we can find out the point where the minima occurs right let's say we get a curve like this and minima occurs at this point so for that we need to differentiate this the loss per length with respect to z naught and find out at which point uh, this becomes zero right dy by dx dy by dx becomes zero and the point where it becomes zero will put it in the equation of loss per le length and that will give us this point okay and that comes around 77 ohms okay so basically we need to differentiate loss per length with respect to the characteristic impedance z naught and the value what we get is is nothing but uh, 77 ohms so let's to understand that let's look at the graph of that so here is the graph of loss per uh, losses versus impedance okay so you can see that the minima occurs at this point somewhere near um, 77 ohms okay 77 ohms so the minimum loss in the transmission line occurs at 77 ohms so what are the other factors that decides uh, decides the 
charging of 50 ohms so we have to have the min maximum power transfer it means the signal strength should not be reduced it should be maximum so for that what should be the value of impedance let's consider this coaxial cable with air field dielectric okay? if you want to find out the electric field we know that electric field is inversely proportional to the distance from from the center right center of the cylinder so coaxial cable is cylindrical in nature therefore the inner cylinder will have the higher electric field compared to the outer 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 cylinder right and let's say the potential at the inner cylinder at this at, the, at this point is v naught so the electric field can be written as epk equals v naught divided by e times ln b of a now characteristic impedance formula is approximately written as 1 by 2 pi n naught divided by epsilon r and log of b by a now what we need to find out is power right because we want the maximum power transfer so power transfer is nothing but v square by 2z so power transfer v square so how to find out v square just transpose this on the other side from here we get v square v naught square equals e square times a square ln of b by a whole square right so if you try put this in in this equation power equation we get something like this okay so this is the maximum power equation now we need to find out the value at which the maxima occurs right so differentiate this dp max with respect to z right the in impedance so the maxima occurs at value b by equals 1.5 okay now if we put 1.5 b by a in the equation we can find out the maximum power right so putting b by a 1.5 in this equation z naught will give us the impedance value the maximum the impedance what is the minimum value of impedance that will give us the maximum power right and that comes around 30 ohms okay so you can see from this graph so the maximum power occurs at somewhere near 30 ohms as you can see here to transfer the signal from one point to another we have to have the maximum power of the signal so to have that we need the impedance of 30 ohms and we also need to look at the attenuation for the minimum attenuation the impedance should be somewhere near 77 ohms and for maximum power transfer it is 30 ohm impedance so we have to do some trade-off and find out some mid value where there is good compromise between these two resistance value so if you look at the plot combined plot of uh, attenuation versus maximum power transfer this comes somewhere like this and so the red one is basically attenuation so there is minimum attenuation at 77 ohms you can see and the maximum power at 30 ohms the power is maximum at 30 ohms okay so if you see somewhere in between it's come somewhere this line right if you draw a vertical line somewhere here so it is 50 ohms so the good compromise between these two is 50 ohms even though if you try to look at from different perspective let's say if you take the arithmetic mean of 77 and 30 it comes somewhere 53 and if you take the geometric mean of uh, these two value 30 and 77 77 it comes somewhere near 48 uh, ohms okay so 48 ohm is geometric mean and 53 is arithmetic mean so the 50 ohm is good compromise between these two therefore 50 ohm impedance is the one which we chose for the best possible option considering the minimum loss and the maximum power transfer through the transmission line so that's all about 50 ohm termination and impedance matching Hope you found this video insightful to stay connected like and subscribe have a nice day thank you so much for watching